Hello and welcome to the Ice Guy, brought to you by the National Hockey Now Network. This is the show that takes you into the world of the National Hockey League. Every game, every day, from a betting perspective. With pro sports handicappers, Ian Cameron, Alex B. Smith, and various guests from the world of hockey and sports betting. And now, here's your host, Ian Cameron. Welcome to the Ice Guys, presented by National Hockey Now. It is Tuesday, December 13th. Ian Cameron with you, and we have a guest joining us today on the Tuesday edition of the show. Kevin from the desert, Scottsdale, uh, Arizona, joining us today for the first time uh, on the Ice Guys show. Kevin, welcome to the Ice Guys for the first time. Uh, How are things with you? And just tell us a little bit about your hockey background, your betting background, and things of that magnitude. Yeah, yeah, sure. And Ian, thanks so much for having me. I've uh, been a viewer of the show for a while now and uh, feel like I practically know you, you and Alex, but this is great to be on. Uh, so yeah, I've been uh, watching hockey almost my whole life since about 2004 um, and have been playing hockey for about 10 years recreationally. Um, but capping wise, I've, I've been uh, capping the NHL for five seasons now. Um, so I'm really starting to find my groove and have uh, met a lot of awesome people in the, in the community and um, really, really love about capping hockey and MLB. Um, those are my two main sports, but um, this time of year is just, is just great with the uh, hockey and full swing. Yeah, no question about that. It sure is. Uh, it's that time of year too, where now we're approaching the new year and now, you know, the points are going to become more important to get them uh, certainly uh, for uh, teams trying to make the playoffs. So the games get more cru- uh, important. And of course, once football season ends, then a lot more interest and excitement and eyeballs turn to hockey it seems every single year. And I notice even yeah. Kevin with our viewership and our podcast downloads, they're excellent right now. I think they're close to as good as they've ever been for October, November, December, but they go to another level. Once February rolls around, once the Super Bowl passes by, it's like everybody gets more interested in hockey at that time of year. Uh, and we really get more people uh, interested uh, in it. We were talking before the show began, you know, I've, I've ripped the, uh, what's going on with the coyotes there i think some of it's just disastrous right now and i've said you know not exactly the best hockey market going but i will say this this is one of the guys that is going to do everything in his power to make sure uh, that hockey is growing uh, in that state you can tell he clearly loves the uh, sport which is great and i got to say one thing about you know hockey in arizona they have produced two players that are currently among the two best players in the nhl right now austin matthews and Tage Thompson, who, as a Sabre fan growing up, I absolutely love what I'm seeing out of TNT, uh, Tage Thompson, right now for the uh, Buffalo Sabres. So they are de- they're, they're growing. You're right. The youth hockey is getting stronger there. They're developing players. Uh, and, of course, it goes without saying, Matthews and Thompson shining now from the state of Arizona at the uh, NHL uh, level. Uh, so, Kevin, great to have you with us. Let's jump into the Tuesday card. We will begin with the Seattle Kraken taking on the Tampa Bay Lightning. We've got Tampa Bay minus 200 home favorites here. Six, the uh, total uh, in this one. It's actually six, six and a half, depending on uh, where you look uh, in this uh, game tonight. Uh, The Seattle Kraken, uh, if you watch the uh, Sunday show with uh, Nick, uh, who is on with me, as well as uh, myself, we both kind of liked Seattle uh, on Sunday against Florida. They were able to get the job done, the Kraken, with a nice road victory uh, in that game against the Panthers, even though we were a little bit concerned that Martin Jones was the guy starting a net for Seattle in that game, noting that his play had declined quite a bit in recent games. But no, he played solid, and certainly enough goals were scored in support of him by the Kraken in that 5-2 to two, uh, victory. We'll see if they can carry that forward tonight. That game obviously snapped a three-game losing streak for them. Uh, Tampa Bay continues their homestand here, which is uh, now the fifth game. Uh, at, on this six-game homestand for the Lightning. Uh, they've started the homestand 3-1 and one so far uh, with wins against Toronto, Nashville, and Florida, the loss being against Detroit by a score of 4-2. to two. You know, this is one of those spots here where I'm, I'm probably going to stay off this game, but, you know, Seattle has been excellent on the road. They're 9-3. and three. I, When I did take Detroit, uh, as a big underdog, it was last week, a week ago tonight, last Tuesday, they be, and Tampa Bay lost to Detroit 4-2. It was with the Lightning coming off the big victory against Toronto, you know, first-round playoff series rematch. And even a great team like Tampa Bay, who looked for the better part of the last month, they look like the uh, Tampa Bay Lightning on their A game again, looking like that team that's gone to three consecutive uh, Stanley Cup finals uh, the last uh, month or so with their level of play. 
but they're not immune to flat spots. They're not immune to laying that occasional egg and clunker every now and then. And that Detroit game showed it. So, you know, I wouldn't be rushing to lay 200 here, minus 200 with Tampa Bay in this spot. Uh, at the same time, do I want to, uh, I've been on Seattle a bunch. I don't know if I'll be on the Kraken either, but I, I do have a small lean toward the Seattle side. And with this being, by the way, our BetCast night, which is a good segue to that, it is a live BetCast tonight for the Ice Guys, 7 o'clock p.m. Uh, Eastern time. I feel this is a game I would rather, with the BetCast taking place tonight, just see how it starts, see how Tampa Bay starts the game, see how Seattle starts the game, because right away I can seem to tell in these games when Tampa Bay's locked in, they're geared up for the game, and when they're not. There's a clear difference. And that Detroit game I could see right away. It's not looking like that Tampa Bay team that's got it all going tonight. And I think this is one of those games where, especially with us having the bet cast tonight, going to sit back, watch the first, you know, five, ten minutes of the game. And then maybe if I see Tampa Bay not looking so good early in the game, it may jump in on Seattle in some level, whether it's puck line or uh, plus one and a half for some safety or security, or maybe even just taking a shot on the money line will do so. But I definitely want to see how this game starts before jumping in. Uh, Kevin, what do you think here? Seattle, Tampa Bay. Yeah. So Tampa Bay, like you said, they, they've caught their stride the, this last month. Um, they're starting to play a lot better than when they kicked off the season. Um, Seattle, I've had the chance to watch quite a bit since I am on the West coast. I, I catch a lot of their games um, and they've been very fun to back this season. Um, just looking at their, their road numbers, they're averaging 4.25 goals per game on the road, um, which is almost a goal and a half higher than they do at home. Um, so that, that's a spot to look at. Um, and I do want to try to back the Kraken here in, in some way. Um, with that said, I think looking at their team total is, is a good angle. Um, most of my capping is, is model based. So it starts at, I start with models to see, you know, where I can find edges and then I look at trends. Um, so in this case, I, I've got the team total for Seattle over two and a half, kind of at 66% chance to hit. Um, so I'm, I'm going to take a look at that. Um, it's minus 115 over at Caesars. So I'm going to go ahead and grab that. I do see the Kraken getting three tonight. Um, if it's Vasilevsky going, you know, he hasn't been up to form this season that, as he has in years past. Um, so I could easily see Seattle getting uh, three goals here tonight. Um, and then from a player prop perspective, I'm, I'm also looking at Jared McCann to get a point tonight. Um, I see tremendous value in that. He's uh, plus 100 to get a point tonight. And when you look at his game logs, all of his points seem to come in bunches. Um, he always seems to get like two every couple games. Um, so last game he got a point. Um, I'm hoping that pattern continues tonight and, he gets another point, and I'll take that chance at plus money. Uh, that that was some good props, actually. I agree with those. McGinn has definitely been one of those undervalued players lately. No doubt about that for the Seattle crack and see if he's able to uh, find the score sheet tonight in this game. Philip Grubauer, by the way, is confirmed in net here for the Kraken tonight. Uh, they've been basically starting to ease him back in. Dave Haxtell, I think eventually he's going to get the number one spot back, uh, but they're just – basically been going back and forth him and martin jones lately vasilevsky projected not confirmed yet but is projected to be uh, in net for the uh, lightning again i do lean a little bit to seattle i've been backing them a lot on the road uh, i'm going to look to see how this game starts though before uh getting uh, involved in it and again a reminder very important the ice guys bet cast i know we get a lot of viewers we get usually 60 to 70 live viewers and i mentioned the last time you guys stepped up and responded the way i was hoping 60, 70 live viewers, I say, we usually get on average for the BetCast, yet only six or seven people, usually maximum, join us on the actual stream. And I said, come on, you join us. Even if it's just for five minutes to say hello and uh, not stay for too long, that's okay. Just uh, make your presence known. This is a family. This is a community here, uh, the Ice Guys. So we want to see you. We want to hear from you. Uh, so make sure uh, if you're around at all and just want to say hello for even if it's just five minutes to be on the BetCast uh, Definitely join us tonight and DM me, and I will send you the stream you know, the streamyard link for the uh, betcast tonight at uh, seven o'clock p.m. Uh, Eastern time. Live betting commentary. I don't know how long we'll go tonight. We may not go right till the end of the night like we did last time, but that Seattle LA game. How the hell am I going to shut down the betcast in the middle of a nine eight hockey game? How can I, in good conscience, say you know what? Uh, we can't keep the betcast going with this crazy game going on. So that's why we stuck around right till the end. Uh, yeah, DM on Twitter, uh, Zach F. Yeah, at Bobano, uh, as you can see here. Um, 
when I get the uh, game, when the game uh, is not, there you go. As you can see, when I take the, uh, what game we're talking about uh, off display, off the screen, you can see the uh, Twitter handle there. Yeah, at Bobano, you just send me a DM there and we will send you the link for the BetCast tonight uh, before it begins. So 7 p.m. Eastern, bring your favorite beverages as well, adult beverages. It's a pub bar atmosphere. We do some drinking during the BetCast, so it's a lot of fun. Uh, no question. That's tonight at 7 p.m. Eastern. And Alex B. Smith, who's not with me on the Daily Show today, he will be back, of course, on the uh, BetCast tonight as well. All right, L.A. Kings, Buffalo Sabres, even money, minus 110 here, uh, six and a half the total uh, in this one. Uh, I like um, I like the Sabres a little bit here in this game. It's been a tough stretch here for them uh, of late. You know, they lost back-to-back games against the uh, Pittsburgh Penguins uh, over the weekend. Uh, so difficult losses there. The, the one at home was really tough because they had a 3-2 lead. Pittsburgh tied it, and then they won in overtime. And really, it was that bonehead penalty by Jeff Skinner. Uh, I mean, it was just a bad, bad decision. He lost his shit for a moment, lost his cool, cross-checked Jake Gensel in the face, really shouldn't have done stupid things like that, uh, and ended up paying the price for it with a suspension. And that suspension continues into tonight. Uh, for Skinner, suspended three games. He's only served one game so far of that suspension. So he'll miss two more games for the Sabres, including tonight uh, as they take on the LA Kings. Uh, Phoenix Copley has been confirmed uh, in goal for the Kings. I got to give the guy credit. I mean, he has won both of his starts. I mean, two goals allowed to Ottawa, two goals allowed to Montreal. This is someone that's been, you know, bounced around multiple teams, the St. Louis organization, the Washington uh, organization. Is this going to keep going, though, indefinitely? That's the question. We're talking about a guy that's been league average goaltender, a backup goaltender most of his career. But so far, so good for Phoenix Copley uh, in the uh, in between the pipes here for the Kings in his first couple starts. Craig Anderson will get the nod for the uh, Buffalo Sabres uh, in this game. Uh, his last couple haven't been nearly as sharp. Four goals allowed against both Detroit and Pittsburgh, although the Sabres had a ch- uh, did beat Detroit 5-4 in that game in a shootout, lost 4-3 in Anderson's last start against the uh, Penguins on Friday night in Buffalo. I also like this game over the total. I mean, we've talked incessantly here about the Buffalo Sabres overs, and it's well worth uh, mentioning them again here. And we've also talked about how the LA Kings have not been very sharp defensively. Uh, the last, I would say, two, three weeks. I mean, they have not been consistent in their own end. I thought they'd finally dug down defensively with one of their better efforts against Montreal. But then the game before that, they were just hemmed in their own zone the entire game against Toronto, completely dominated in that shutout loss. And you think, hey, they play a good defensive game, finally step up on that end of the ice against Montreal. Maybe some positives. You can keep that kind of momentum going. Bring that defensive intensity and effort to the next game against Columbus. Sure enough, they did not uh, against the Jackets in that game. Right back to struggling to defend. The penalty kill has been inconsistent. Five-on-five defense hasn't been a whole lot better. And, of course, in that Columbus game, they end up losing 6-5 to five, uh, in overtime to the Blue Jackets. So just haven't been impressed with what I've seen from the Kings defensively, which also speaks volumes about why they've trended 5-2 and two to the over. Uh, in their last seven games coming into tonight. Meanwhile, we don't have to talk too much about how Buffalo for the longest time has trended uh, over the total, eight and two over the total in their last 10 games entering tonight. So it feels obvious, but sometimes obvious is the right bet. So uh, over six and a half for me at minus 135. Uh, What do you think here, Kevin? Kings and Sabres. Yeah, so my model had this one pretty much a pick em as well with a slight edge to Buffalo. Um, I did cap it using Jonathan Slow, as the uh, comments say. Uh, but even with Copley in it, I still like Buffalo here at home. Um, like you said, the sample size for Copley's it's small uh, right now, but give him credit, he's he has done, done pretty well. Um, but I do like Buffalo here. Um, the home team is 23-7 and seven in the last 30 meetings. Um, so that's that's a nice little uh, betting trend there for Buffalo to follow. And they're averaging 4.6 goals per game over their last 10. Um, of course, that's maybe a little inflated with Tate Thompson's five goals, uh, but they are are playing pretty well at home. So I do like them uh, Buffalo Sabres money line. And I also like the over six and a half. Um, I believe it's moving to seven. Um, in some books already, if not all books. So if you can grab the six and a half, you like the over, um, I would take it now. And I'm just looking at the uh, line combinations here as well for this uh, game. 
Uh, you know, from a prop standpoint, Kevin, I'm, I think you do because you said you've watched the show a bunch of times that, you know, I love the players that are going up the lineup, that are moving up from a position where maybe they were a third line or a fourth line, and now they're going up to the second line or even the top line. And, and I think we've got an, incident, uh, an, uh, an example of that, rather, for the L.A. Kings. We've got Jarrett Anderson Dolan tabbed to move from the fourth line to the second line tonight for the uh, L.A. Kings. And obviously with that increase uh, up the lineup comes more opportunity, more ice time. He did score. Uh, against the uh, Columbus Blue Jackets in his last game. And maybe Todd McClellan, the head coach, sees something there that, hey, he got a goal the other night. We're going to give him an opportunity to showcase maybe more of that offensive ability and maybe uh, uh, tap into it a little bit uh, for him. Uh, alongside Phil Deneau and Trevor Moore, he is slated to play on that second line tonight for the LA Kings. So those are the kind of player prop situations I love to uh, take advantage of that. Uh, and uh, Jared Anderson Dolan again moving up to the uh, second line tonight for the uh, LA Kings. I've talked about Kaliev for a very long time, uh, how he's a little undervalued in the prop market right now because he's up on the top line for the LA Kings at the moment as well. Uh, definitely take advantage of that is what I've been uh, looking to do, and I'll probably have a little uh, Kaliev props involved tonight as well, playing with Kopitar and Fiala. And again, it's just Kopitar's priced highly. Fiala is yet Kaliev's on that same line and you can get such a better price on him for a point and a better price on him to score a goal. And that's always why uh, I gravitate to the player that's just been moved up to that kind of position in the lineup. So uh, definitely some couple of things there to uh, worth noting. Buffalo is one of those tricky teams from a prop standpoint because there's so many different players that can contribute offensively. You just can't zone in on one guy. Tage Thompson obviously is the obvious choice to zone in on, but a lot of times he takes a back seat and you get your J.J. Paterkas, your Dylan Cousins, uh, you know, your Alex Tucks, your uh, and other players that step up. Darlene can chip in offense from the uh, blue line. Jack Quinn has been very good uh, lately for the uh, Buffalo Sabers as well. So uh, you can sp that's why I always say you can sprinkle the uh, sh or spread the wealth, share the wealth a little bit when it comes to betting uh, Saber player props because there's so many different players that can make an impact and make a difference uh, on a nightly basis. All right, next up we've got Dallas and New Jersey. Uh, the Devils minus 165 home favorites, six and a half being the total uh, in this game. It's a back-to-back -back spot for both teams, actually. They both played last night, and they both were on the losing end of their matchups last night. Uh, the Dallas Stars fall uh, to the Pittsburgh Penguins with a late last-minute goal, courtesy of Evgeny Malkin, uh, to lose to the Pittsburgh Penguins by a score of 2-1. to one. Uh, For uh, Dallas now suddenly trending uh, you know, down a little bit, Three wins in their last eight games, three and five uh, in their last eight games. New Jersey, meanwhile, we talked about going into yesterday, usually reliable off a loss. That's now only the second time all year they've lost two games in a row. And they had a nice, comfortable, at least it was for a brief moment, three to one lead over the Rangers. But the Rangers get two quick ones in the second period. And then they end up winning in overtime by a score of four to three. Very nice, you know, come from behind, gutted out win for the New York Rangers as they slowly but surely try to get some of their confidence back uh, after a bit of a skid. So now you've got both teams on a back-to-back, -back. both teams looking to uh, bounce back here in this matchup with the Stars and the uh, Devils. Uh, Stars have won four of the last five head-to-head -head against New Jersey, including back-to-back -back, uh, in New Jersey uh, over this uh, Devils team. But at the same point in time, New Jersey is not the team – uh, this year that they've been in years past. They're a much better hockey team. We know that much deeper in terms of their four lines. Uh, the, the defense and goaltending last night wasn't so great, but I think overall we've seen big improvement in their uh, defensive numbers, whether it's shots allowed, high danger chances allowed, expected goals against. All of those key you know, advanced numbers are so much improved this year uh, for the New Jersey Devils. Uh, we'll see who's in net for tonight. Obviously, it's back-to-back, -back, so... Last night, you saw Vanacek for the Devils in net, and of course, you saw Jake Ottinger in net for the Dallas Stars. Probably a good chance we see Wedgwood back-to-back -back, uh, for Dallas and probably Akira Schmid here for the uh, New Jersey Devils. And especially with Akira Schmid, here he is a guy that has really played well with the opportunities he's had lately in net for the Devils. He's got a 5-1 and one record and a 1.7 goals against 940 save percentage. So if we see him in net, he's showing right now a level of confidence that uh, 
would have me willing to trust him here uh, going into this matchup. Meanwhile, Wedgwood is uh, Wedgwood's had some really good games. Don't get me wrong, but it's been a little bit more uh, like what we expect from him. The last couple of starts he's had, he's given up a couple where he's had four goals allowed uh, in his last few starts. We'll see if he can uh, perform well here for the uh, Dallas Stars tonight. But I definitely am interested here in the Devils a little bit in regulation. I think if I were to bet it, that's the way I would go. I haven't decided if I'm going to bet it pregame. I might wait for something better in terms of the uh, live bet cast tonight. But definitely, if I were to bet this one from a side perspective, it would be Devils for me uh, in regulation. Uh, Kevin, what do you think here, Dallas and New Jersey? Yeah, so like you said, both teams coming off a of back-to-back. Um, New Jersey was in New York, so not very far travel. Um, so that's something to consider. Dallas coming from Pittsburgh uh, last night. Both teams you know, played played a close, hard game. Um, with that said, I think the teams are going to be a little bit tired. Um, we're going to see some slow legs. Defense might not be very tight, and we do have the backup goalies. Uh, Schmid's numbers have been awesome, but um, I do like the over six here. I, I grabbed it last night, so I'm not sure if any sixes um, are still available, but I grabbed that at minus 120. Um, but, yeah, the, the Devils in reg is, is also not a bad look. Um, one thing to be careful of, though, is I, I do know the stars in the third period, they tend to – kind of turn it on, um, especially if they're down. There's a couple games I've watched them play um, where in the third period they just explode for goals. So um, you can also maybe look for a live over um, in this game, kind of depending on on how it starts off. And, you know, coming off back-to-back uh, games and, and traveling, it, it could start slow, but things might pick up and the, the over might make more sense at a better price. Yeah, this is definitely – I might put a little small little piece on the Devils in regulation pregame, but most of the wager is going to be if I get involved in, with the Devils, it'll be more during the betcast tonight. And again, on these nights when we have the betcast, I we we try to I try personally, and I know Alex does as well, pull back the reins a little bit on you know just peppering the board pregame because we really want to illustrate examples of hey, we're getting good value here on the betcast. Now's the chance we can bet this team or this total or whatever the case may be. And that's the uh, the, the, the great thing about having uh, the bet cast like we have. Akira Schmid is actually a top, uh, you know, 20 goalie in the NHL with goals saved above average. I want to point that out as well, which tells you he's really uh, been playing well when he's had these opportunities in between the pipes for the uh, New Jersey Devils. So we'll see if he can keep up his recent good play tonight uh, for them as they face the uh, Dallas Stars, looking to avoid a rare, and I mean rare, three-game losing streak. In fact, they've never lost three in a row this year, the New Jersey Devils. The only other time they lost two in a row was right at the beginning of the season, their first two games against Philly and Detroit. And so this is the first time all season they would have lost three games if they don't win tonight uh, against the uh, Dallas Stars. All right, next up, we've got Columbus and Florida. Uh, The uh, Panthers are minus 300 home favorites here, six and a half uh, being the total uh, in this game. Uh, Bobrovsky once again in net for the uh, Florida Panthers, they really have no choice at the moment. Spencer Knight remains out and unavailable for the Panthers uh, due to the illness that he keeps on uh, going through right now. Uh, they haven't said what type of illness, whether it's just a, a real bad you know, flu or cold illness or COVID, who the hell knows. But it's an illness that's obviously kept him uh, out of action now for a few games. He's trending in the right direction, but not ready to go tonight. So they're giving Bobrovsky uh, another opportunity here. But again, with Bobrovsky, he's, there's a reason why Spencer Knight has gotten more of the starts than him lately, and you've seen evidence of it the last two games. You know, or actually really the last, I would say, three of his last five games, he's been way below average in terms of his performance. That Calgary game was a disaster when he was in net, when they lost 6-2 to the Flames. He was flopping around like a fish in net in one of those goals. Like he's just like a drunk man on skates, as I said that day. It was just ridiculous. I mean, he's losing his net, losing his balance, not tracking the puck well, giving up goals through the five hole. I mean, it just hasn't been consistent, hasn't been good. Uh, One game to the next from Bobrovsky. He's back-to-back starts for him where he's given up four goals against the Lightning and the Kraken. Uh, That's not what you want to see. Now, tough spot, obviously. He has to play back-to-back days uh, over the weekend because Spencer Knight's out. But at the same time, you know, you got to be better. Uh, in net and he hasn't been lately simple as that for the uh, uh, Florida Panthers I don't have to take it easy on the guy he's making a shit ton of money right now he should be playing at a level better than this considering the contract he's signed you know and and he's just not doing it right now uh, for the uh, Florida Panthers on the flip side for Columbus you know I'll give this team I continue to give this team uh, their share of credit for just gutting out what 
you know, with all the injuries, we've talked about all the personnel depletion uh, that this team has suffered through. They've got four starting defensemen uh, that remain out, Bean, Blankenberg, Boquist, and Wierenski, and none of them are coming back anytime soon. Danforth and Voracek have been out uh, up front as well. You know, they've missed some really key players in their lineup, and they still continue to battle one, two in a row, for goodness sake, against uh, Calgary uh, and L.A., and they beat Florida in the midst of having all these injuries last month by a score of 5-3 to three at home against the Panthers. So, you know, I don't know if I'm going to grab the plus price with Columbus, but, man, I'm definitely leaning more toward dog than favorite uh, in this game at this particular price as Florida continues to be an inconsistent mess. They're only, you know, 4-6 and six in their last 10 games. They're on a two-game losing streak now. This is just not a price I'm interested in at this point in time with the Florida Panthers. I do like the over as well in this game. That's my favorite stance is more toward the total. Uh, six and a half here, minus 120 in this game. Uh, but even, and then look, there's going to there's some really big favorites and some favorites that I think could be in some dubious spots tonight. This is one of them just because Florida, to me, is not playing with that level uh, of play that warrants to me a minus 315 favorite. At this point in time, and these favorites are so big that you could even take a plus one and a half puck line with Florida at minus 120 uh, in this game. If you want a little more security, um, you know, there's d- definitely different uh, or sorry, not with a Columbus, I should say a plus one and a half in this game with them uh, is right now. Let me just see here. We had it up on the screen. The plus one and a half. It is. Uh, yeah, it's even money, actually, plus 100 with the uh, Columbus Blue Jackets at uh, even money. So Columbus you know, team total over two and a half, as someone says in the chat. I think that's a good look. I mean, I definitely like over six and a half, but even just asking the Jackets right now to score three goals. And keep in mind, they've got Lion A back, which is significant. You know, obviously, there's he's someone they count upon uh, for offense, uh, especially with all the injuries. And he just came back a few games ago. And look at how he's ripping it up for the Jackets. Four goals and six points in the last three games for uh, Patrick Lyonnais. So, you know, him to score a goal and him to even get over one and a half points tonight uh, in this game, you could look in that direction with Patrick Lyonnais tonight for the uh, Jackets in this one. Uh, so I lean Jackets in some form, team total over. You, know, you could do a puck line, money line split, plus one and a half, and take a take a shot at the plus 250, which I, I don't hate it. Um, and uh, But most of all, I like over six and a half, definitely my favorite look on this particular game. Uh, what do you think here, Kevin jackets and Panthers? Yeah. So Florida just hasn't been like you were alluding to not very consistent this year. So this, this price is, is a little bit scary. Um, when I first saw this, my initial thought was CBJ's a, a live dog here. Um, when I ran the numbers, I just really still don't see value, um, in, in a side. So the team total for Columbus, um, is my one of my favorite plays for today um over two and a half at at plus uh, 100 i think is a great look uh Bobrovsky, especially in net he's given up uh more than two goals and three out of his last four starts um so with columbus the, the way they've been playing lately patty's back in the lineup he's shooting the puck like crazy um expect some some power play opportunities for columbus i could see them getting that that three pretty easily so um, I'm definitely putting that one in today at plus 100 and um, the total here as well. The, the last four uh, meetings in Florida have gone 4-0 to the over. Um, so I think that's worth a look. And of course, overs are always a, a blast to bet um, if, if they go your way, of course. Um, but yeah, that's that's what I like in this one tonight. Yeah. And uh, by the way, for Columbus, their goaltending situation is not very good right now. That would be the concern, obviously, if you're going to take the Jackets puck line or money line it might be why if you bet team total over two and a half plus 100 again you eliminate what columbus does defensively you eliminate what the goaltending uh how the goaltending performs for them because they've got corpus still on ir and that means uh for better or worse it's elvis merzlikens every game now uh, unless they play on a back-to-back and we've talked about ad nauseum his issues he struggled for a very long time going back to last year he's been dreadful this year 4.83 4.83 goals against average, 862 save percentage. He did have a solid game against Calgary Friday night, but again, he couldn't follow it up. Uh, even though they beat LA, he gave up five goals. They, they won in spite of Merzlikens in that game. Uh, he's Merzlikin, as I've said many times here uh, on this show. So uh, that's another reason why the over probably has got a good shot here in this game tonight. Uh, Merzlikens in that. I do feel bad about the situation as to why he's struggling because I don't think it's all physical with him. I think a lot of it is he hasn't been mentally there 
uh, and on, you know, sharp and just feeling it. And the emotions have been raw and they've been all over the place, obviously, since the tragedy involving his best friend, his countryman, his teammate, Matisse Kivlenics, the firework incident. I mean, just horrifying stuff. And, um, you know, I don't think he's uh, been able to really focus on stopping the puck and focus on playing uh, ever since that. And it's definitely shaken him up, in my opinion, because it it seems like it perfectly coincides his struggles with that uh, traumatic uh, moment happening in his life. So uh, but again, he definitely continues to fight it. We'll see uh, how he performs tonight, assuming he's in net. He currently is projected for the uh, Jackets tonight. All right. Anaheim, Toronto. We've got the uh, Toronto Maple Leafs. You want to lay minus 500 to as high as minus 540 with the Leafs tonight? Uh, in this game, because if you like them, that's what you're going to have to do. Uh, The total uh, six and a half here uh, in this one. Um, You know, when I look at this game here with the, uh, with the uh, ducks and the Leafs, the Leafs are absolutely rolling right now. No denying that whatsoever. They're playing outstanding hockey. You know, they're right on the heels. Now of the Boston Bruins for first in the Atlantic division. That's how well uh, this team has played, you know, Mitch Marner on the 22 consecutive game point streak, 11 goals, 19 assists, during those 22 games, which is just insane numbers. Uh, they, the Maple Leafs as a team, they have g- collected at least one point in 14 straight games, second longest streak in franchise history without a regulation loss, 11-0-3 uh, in their last 14 games. So 14 straight games here without uh, a regulation loss for the Leafs uh, going into this game tonight against the uh, Ducks. Uh, of overtime win 5-4 uh, against the uh, Calgary Flames. Uh, you know, they've just been r- terrific. And I've s- said this about the Leafs, and I'll say it again. When they've got William Nylander, Austin Matthews, and of course, the 22-game point streak man, Mitch Marner, playing at the level they are playing right now at the same time, simultaneously, and they're all rolling right now for the Leafs, they're very tough to beat. I don't want to use the word unstoppable because any team can be beaten on any given night, but they're pretty damn close to unstoppable when they're all playing like that. At the same time, they're all earning their paychecks. Exactly right. Even Tavares, you know, he's had a very solid season for the Leafs. They're all playing great. They've managed somehow to play good team defense. Their structure with all the injuries was unbelievably good. I couldn't believe what I was seeing. A team with no TJ Brody, a team with no Morgan Riley, a team with no Jake Muzzin for weeks, playing some of their best team defense as a five-man unit I've seen in years from the Toronto Maple Leafs. And now they've got Brody back. I don't think it's going to be long until Morgan Riley comes back. I think he's progressing uh, in a positive direction. So wait until they get, you know, their full complement on the blue line healthy again and back on the ice. Then things could really start to be something for this uh, Toronto Maple Leafs team. Uh, Obviously, they welcome in a wounded, and I mean wounded Anaheim Ducks team. I mean, it's just absolutely pathetic what we're seeing from them right now. Uh, one and one, one and eight in their last nine games. They had that one win against Carolina in overtime, four three, and thinking maybe that could turn things around for the Ducks. And sure enough, they get drubbed in their next two games, losing to San Jose and Ottawa by a combined score of nine to one, uh, six to one to San Jose. Shut out three nothing last night uh, by the Ottawa Senators. That being said, this we I, there's still that little seed in the back of my mind when it comes to this Toronto team over the years that when they are playing a game on a early in the week on a Monday or a Tuesday night at home and they welcome in one of the dregs of the NHL into their building they kind of go through the motions they kind of look flat they kind of struggle to get by and struggle you know to find ways to win games like that and that to me that shouldn't happen with the way they're playing right now but it's one of those games where if they pump Anaheim six to one it wouldn't surprise me and it's one of those games where it's two two with five minutes left in the third period it wouldn't shock me because we have seen this Leafs team sometimes in a dead environment that you watch now tonight and we'll have the bet cast tonight we'll be able to see it all together for ourselves you watch that uh wine and cheese crowd at Scotiabank Arena tonight because that's what it is on a Tuesday night when a bad team is in the building as the opponent you're going to see it's going to be dead silence. It's going to be like a church. It's going to be like a morgue. You know, they could play down to it just a little bit, not in into the game, the Leafs. And then sure enough, one pa- mistake and Anaheim scores a first goal. And then all of a sudden you got a game on your hands if you're the Toronto Maple Leafs. And it shouldn't happen. They're playing dynamite hockey. Anaheim is playing horrendous hockey. They've also got the schedule advantage, Toronto. They've been off since Saturday. 
no travel. Anaheim's coming in on a back-to-back after playing in Ottawa. There's no excuses that uh, Toronto should roll in this game, but should doesn't always transpire the way you think it should. The, the things you think should happen don't always happen. Um, it's, it's a pass for me, but it, 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 to me, it would, don't don't be don't be don't be shocked if Anaheim is f- hanging around in this game longer than they have any right to. That's all I'm saying. Uh, what do you think here, uh, Kevin? Anaheim, Toronto. Yeah, so well, I, I'm definitely bringing wine and cheese to the betcast for this one. Um, but you're you're exactly right. I have that same feeling in my head because I've witnessed this happen to the the Leafs a bunch of times. That the Coyotes have actually been on the good end of that where Veg Melka has, has stolen games from the Leafs. Um, I know there were a couple TNT games uh, over the past couple seasons where, where that's happened. Um, so it, it's clear this is a leap spot. Um, and of course I was trying to, to find something in Anaheim to bet um, just nothing I like there. Uh, but on the Toronto side, you mentioned a, a couple of things. Uh, John Tavares is having a, a great season. Um, and one thing I looked at with, with Johnny T is, in all of his home games against the Ducks, since he's joined the Leafs, he's scored a goal. Um, so I'm going to sprinkle a little bit on, on John Tavares to score tonight at plus 155. And then Mitch Marner, uh, I, I'm going to keep riding the, the points train here. Um, I, I didn't take him straight up on points, but I'm taking him on a, a power play point um, at plus money. Um, you know, he gets gets that top uh, plus power uh plus minutes on the uh, first power play um, and he's rolling right now. So I want him to, I want him to keep going. It's, it's a blast to watch. So that's how I'm backing it. And um, I, I mean, if, if the Leafs don't win this, it's, it's pretty sad, but it could happen. And um, I just like the props tonight. Say this too, about, you make a good point about, you said Marner power play point props. Their power play is clicking now. It's starting to get going. That's actually the one area of the team that even when they were winning these last few weeks, power play wasn't great. Actually, most of their offense was five on five uh, during this good run for the Leafs. But all of a sudden, the last two games, they've scored four power play goals on nine power play attempts. And we know that was going to get going at some point. I mean, they have more than enough talent that the power play and skill that the power play should be better than that. And now they're starting to play like it. Four power play goals for Toronto in the last two games. And they just happen to be going up against, oh yeah, dead last, 32nd ranked penalty kill uh, in the NHL uh, from the Anaheim Ducks. So this could be a night where, you know, if you're going to take Leaf player props and, and, you know, goal props are fine, point props are fine, but you're going to get more value with and a better pr- and better prices with the power play points props. And this could be a night to jump in with a lot of them because you've got a power play that's starting to go and you've got a penalty kill that's been just bit, frank, pretty much pathetic is what it's been all season. The Anaheim Ducks penalty kill. So uh, that's definitely what I would look for too. If you're going to bet some Leafs props tonight is the power play points, because I think you're going to get some value uh, on them there. Uh, And as far as the uh, lineups too, uh, in this game, they were always looking for uh, situations where you got players moving up, moving down uh, in terms of lineup combinations going into uh, this game. I I forgot to mention too, Jaden Schwartz is moving on up to the uh, top line for the uh, Kraken tonight as well so Jaden Schwartz might be a good prop look undervalued there as far as this game goes looks like for Anaheim uh, we've got Comtois from the third line to the second line and I've talked about how he's played better lately he's actually been a pretty solid source of offense for the Ducks lately maybe look in that direction Uh, Mitch Marner I've been betting this a few times and it's come through more than one occasion and it happened against Calgary you take him to score a goal and over one and a half point points uh, and you pair them up in a SGP same game parlay, and you get a plus price, pretty good plus price out of it. Uh, it's been coming through uh, lately, so uh, that definitely is something that uh, appeals to me, uh, piques my interest tonight as far as Toronto goes in this game. So it's more of a prop game for me, as you can tell, than betting uh, either side. Uh, it's just a, a huge uh, astronomical price. The one thing that actually keeps me off taking a shot with Anaheim is Toronto lost to them on the road trip in California. And, you know, that was when tr- things were going awful for the Leafs. You would think they're going to want to make amends for that because they know they don't have to be reminded they lost to Anaheim and they were dismal on that road trip. Uh, I don't think they'd want to lose to the Ducks, you know, for a second time. Uh, that's why I, that's why I'm not quite buying into the, oh, Toronto's going to be flat against a bad team motive as normally I do just because they lost to Anaheim uh, earlier this year. But then again, maybe they will do a Toronto here and <laughs> – and have a tough time and a greater struggle 
on home ice with the Anaheim Ducks, then they probably should. All right, we got the New York Islanders and the Boston Bruins next up. Uh, Boston minus 260, home favorites, five and a half the total uh, in this game. Uh, this one is uh, interesting because you got Boston, obviously, returning from a road trip. The Islanders uh, tonight on the uh, second uh, of, uh, are they on the back-to-back? No, they're not. They're off. They've been off since uh, Saturday night. They lost to the uh, Carolina Hurricanes. 3 nothing, a shutout loss in that game. Uh, Boston played Sunday against Vegas, 3-1 to one win over the Golden Knights. I had the Bruins in regulation as my uh, best bet on Sunday. It was just a terrific situation. I mean, they were off their, uh, that loss to Arizona where they should have beaten the Coyotes. I mean, Karel Vamelka was just absolutely remarkable in that game, uh, and Boston probably deserved a better fate. But now Boston returns home facing this Islanders team. Uh, the Islanders obviously have kind of been in a win-loss, win-loss pattern here uh, the last few games. Islanders going with Semyon Varlamov tonight uh, in goal for them. Uh, he's 7-4, and 2.67 goals against average, 916 save percentage. Uh, he was in net uh, against New Jersey. They won that game. I wouldn't say they necessarily won it in, uh, thanks to Varlamov. He gave up four goals, but they scored six uh, in that victory. The fact remains, he has won each of his last three starts. He had the shutout against Chicago and only gave up two goals in a victory against Philadelphia. Uh, but this is a different test altogether facing the Bruins, and I'm sure Boston uh, is going to be capable of at least getting a few goals themselves in this game. They're without uh, David Krejci, uh, who remains out. Pavel Zaka is going to end up playing on that second-line center spot uh, in the absence uh, of Krejci uh, tonight for the Bruins. So as a result of that, you might get some value with Krejci in terms of the uh, prop market tonight playing, or sorry, not with Krejci, with Zaka uh, playing uh, in place of David Krejci uh, on that second line center spot for the uh, Boston uh, Bruins tonight. Islanders have their share uh, of injuries too at the moment. Uh, Palmieri, uh, Beauvillier, uh, Pellick, uh, all it looks like either out or possibly out. Looks like Beauvillier, it's going to be a game time decision for him. Uh, tonight for this game. So they're a little bit banged up. Pellick is a big loss on the blue line. I mean, we've said it for years, uh, Kevin, as far as the Islanders go, this blue line is Pollock and Pellick, the, the double P's, as I like to say, uh, those are by far their two best defensemen right now. And when one or both of them is missing, this is not the same team defensively. And this is not as good of a hockey team when one or both of those guys is out, especially on the back end. So I don't love the idea of Adam Pellick being out tonight. Uh, for the Islanders. So this is going to be a pass for me. I mean, I, Boston is coming off a road trip. It's not the greatest spot for them, but I don't trust the Islanders to go into Boston and win, not with the injuries right now. It's probably going to be a stay off game for me for now. But if you join us on the BetCast tonight, 7 p.m. Eastern, I'm sure we'll jump in live with something. Uh, when we see this game unfold, I'll see how the pace is going, who's carrying play, who's dictating play, and we'll be able to make some live bets as this game progresses tonight live on the Ice Guys BetCast. Uh, what do you think here, Kevin, Islanders, Bruins? Yeah, so with those injuries you mentioned with the Islanders, it's something I was looking at um, in, on their blue line. You know, there's there's those two guys, and then from there it, it kind of falls off. Uh, so I'm looking to exploit those injuries here. The total is very appealing at five and a half. Um, and it looks like Varlamov's confirmed. He's he's been pretty good, um, but I still kind of like the the over here. Um, the last five meetings in Boston, this has gone over uh, four zero oh, and one to the over. Um, and I'm not worried about Boston contributing to the over. Um, I think they're going to get their share of goals, but it's can the Islanders get goals against this Boston team who's fourteen and zero oh at home? Um, playing very good. If it's Linus Olmark in net, I mean, he's been stellar this year. Um, so I'm leaning the over five and a half. I haven't pulled the trigger yet, um, but we'll see. Maybe that'll be a live play that I do. Um, and then from a player prop perspective, I like Brad Marchand to score. Um, in his four games against the Islanders at home, he's had four goals. Um, so I really like that trend. And he hasn't scored in three games. So um, I think his his time is due. Uh, we know that goals and points come in bunches, and I think he's going to get one tonight. So he's at plus 155. I like the value there for Marchie to score. All right, liking Brad Marchand to score. I'll say this for the Boston props. Normally I shy away from Marchand, Bergeron, Pasternak, guys like that, because you know obviously they're ob you're not going to get the same value as you would for, say, T Taylor Hall and Charlie Coyle, who I think are excellent value prop options right now for the Bruins. Taylor Hall's got five goals in the last six games. Charlie Coyle has scored uh, in back-to-back -back games 
for Boston. So I think they're good value options tonight. But I will say this, when you've got an Adam Pellick out of your lineup, you know, one of your shutdown defensemen, what does that mean? It means life's going to be a little bit easier maybe for the top line of the opponent when you talk about one of your shutdown defensemen out. And that's who's out for the Islanders tonight. So it could mean a little bit tougher for the Islanders to try to contain Brad Marchand and Posternock and Bergeron tonight. So this could be a night where they do some damage because of the fact you're missing one of your stalwarts, one of your leaders in, on ice, in ice time on the blue line, plays in all situations. One of your top shutdown D is Adam Pellick. You don't have him tonight, and it could allow more opportunity to maneuver and operate tonight for the perfection line for the uh, Boston Bruins uh, in this game tonight. Definitely something you want to keep in mind. All right, we've got Carolina and Detroit. We've got the Hurricanes next up, uh, minus uh, 175. Uh, home fee, actually minus 170 in most spots here. The total uh, in this game currently sitting at uh, six, uh, pretty much uh, across the board, shaded to the under uh, in this one. Uh, you do have Detroit returning home off a road trip, little dubious spot for them. Uh, Carolina, it seems like they've been on the road forever, uh, this team. They've had a long, long run uh, on the road. Uh, they're coming off a 3 nothing shutout win against the uh, Islanders, uh, and now they've finished this uh, road trip tonight. Uh, after Pittsburgh, St. Louis, L.A., Anaheim, New York Islanders, and now in Detroit tonight. And they'll finally head home and face Seattle uh, on Thursday night. Man, could that be a good spot to back Seattle maybe Thursday night, uh, especially if they lose tonight to Tampa, bounce back, and they catch Carolina after a very long road trip. So that could be a good bet on spot for the Kraken Thursday night when they play Carolina as a big road underdog. Might be worth a look there. But as for this game tonight, look, Carolina's 5-1 and one in their last six games. Other than the loss against Anaheim, which is a head-scratcher, that they lost that game. Uh, they've been playing some really good hockey. They've also started to get a lot healthier. Tavo Teravainen's come back uh, in recent games uh, for the uh, Carolina Hurricanes. They are playing still without Sebastian Ajo. Uh, he remains out, yes, per Foss, day-to-day. And it looks like Ajo will miss his second consecutive game. Uh, for the uh, Hurricanes tonight. He was also uh, out of the lineup against the Islanders uh, the other night. I mean, I, I definitely don't want to step in front of Carolina at this in, in this game with the way they're playing, but it is the end of this road trip. You know, Detroit, it's kind of a bet against spot for both teams because also, like I said, Detroit's coming back home off the road. Carolina's finishing off a road trip that's been very successful. You know, they're 4-1 and one on the road trip. Even if they lose tonight, it's a winning road trip before they go home. So it's kind of two teams that are not in the greatest of spots to back. So in, as a result, I'm going to probably end up passing. This could be an under as well in this game, just simply because of the fact that, you know, for Carolina, uh, you know, they're capable of playing solid defensive hockey. And a lot of their overs were against teams that were struggling defensively. Anaheim, L.A., St. Louis, Detroit's gone under the total uh, in four straight games entering the night. And you've got two goalies that are bet on goaltenders right now, possibly. You've got Billy Husso in net, who we know has been the better goalie for Detroit compared to Nadelkovic. And it looks like Pyotr Kochetkov is going to likely get the start for Carolina tonight. And he, there's a lot to like with his game right now. 6-1-2, and 2.21 goals against average, 9.18 save percentage, and off that shutout victory uh, against the New York Islanders uh, on Saturday. So this one might end up being a good one to look under the total. Uh, what do you think here, Kevin, Carolina and Detroit? Yeah, so I'm, I'm going to go against the grain here. And I actually like Detroit in this spot as a home dog. Um, my model's got this closer to plus 125 to 130 for Detroit. So I'm seeing some value at this price. Um, Billy Huso is going to be in net. Um, I always look to back him when I can. He started off the year uh, very, very good. Then he, he struggled a little bit um, for, for a couple starts there. But uh, he's been pretty solid. Um, so I can I can see Detroit maybe stealing this game, um, especially at home. Um, I do lean the under as well. I, I don't think I'm going to play that. Um, but Detroit is my my dog of the day, or one of my dogs of the day. I, I really like them here. So I'm going to take a chance, put a small wager on the, the Red Wings money line. All right. How about that? And you know what? I'm always reluctant to fade Detroit when they're this kind of price at home. You know, they, they've been a capable home team at times this year. Series history wise, you know, they've actually beaten Carolina twice in a row and they've actually gone five and two in the last seven head to head meetings against the Carolina Hurricanes. They have been a tough out for Carolina. You know, this is one that, you know, initially I actually was leaning Detroit as well. And then I was like, ah, Carolina's playing well. You know, Detroit's back off a road trip, not exactly a bet on spot. And that's what cooled me off of Detroit. But 
I don't mind that look. I mean, I think there is some value in the price, even though I don't love the spot uh, for the uh, Detroit Red Wings tonight uh, in this game. This is a good bet cast game, too, because if I see Detroit looking strong early, taking the play to the Hurricanes, maybe we'll jump in on them live. But uh, I understand the price point being pretty pretty good for it. Again, this is a scrappy, competitive Detroit team. You know, even in the losses, you know, they had the 5-1 loss against Florida. wasn't good, but don't forget they beat uh, the Tampa Bay the game before that. I thought they played very well against Vegas in one of their last home games. They played Toronto tough at home. They played Buffalo tough at home. I mean, they've been not an easy out for any opponent. So we'll have to wait and see how this one goes. Uh, Kevin Lycan. The home dog here, Detroit, in this one. All right, Vegas and Winnipeg. We've got the uh, Winnipeg Jets, minus 140. Uh, home favorites here, six the total. I mean, the price has gone up, unfortunately, but I still like Winnipeg. I like I liked them in this spot. I I probably, and people warned me in the chat, but I'm, I'm a grown man. I've been doing this for 12 years. I mean, I, I've, I, and I've had a lot of success in the NHL, but the people were right. I mean, that was not the greatest spot to trust Winnipeg the other night against Washington. You know, a Capitals team that is starting to play a little bit better. But, you know, they had that game and they've got the big, this is a big showdown here. This is a team that's uh, bet that Winnipeg is right behind for first place right now. Uh, in the Western Conference. So it ends up being a very big game here for the uh, Winnipeg Jets on home ice. And they've got Vegas a little bit vulnerable at their most vulnerable right now. They've got a lot of keep personnel out. Zach Whitecloud's on IR on that blue line. He's underrated. You know, he's not one of those guys that's noticeable at times on the ice, but that's usually a good thing because it means he's not making mistakes. He's not screwing up. He's not turning the puck over. He's in good position, and when you don't notice a player like White Cloud, usually it means he's doing his job and he's playing a tidy defensive game. So they're going to miss that uh, out of Zach White Cloud uh, right now, even with IR. They miss Petrangelo. It goes without saying. Uh, one of the leaders on the blue line, he's still away from the team as he tends to a personal health matter uh, involving, I think, someone in his family is what I heard. Uh, we'd certainly wish them well. And now Jack Eichel's going to miss another game too for the uh, Vegas Golden Knights. So they've got some key personnel out. Uh, right now for the uh, Vegas Golden Knights. And like I said, they've leveled off a little bit. There are two teams in the Western Conference. Dallas is one we mentioned earlier, and Vegas is another. They, they've they leveled off a little bit, both teams, after that terrific first month of the season. I mean, they're playing 500 hockey, the Vegas Golden Knights, their last 10 games, 5-5 five and five, uh, in their last 10 games entering tonight uh, off a 3-1 loss to Boston. And I remember when they lost a home game and they went on the road uh, and I was hell bent on saying, ah, they're going to roll Columbus and they need a shootout to beat Columbus. And Winnipeg is a whole hell of a lot better than Columbus. So I'm not sold on, oh, Vegas off the loss to Boston going on the road. Usually that's a good bet on situation, but I can't say I'm in love with the way the Knights are playing right now. Their offense is dried up. They've scored four goals in the last three games combined. Coincides with Eichel being out. Tells you how much he has meant to this hockey team uh, this year. The offense hasn't been necessarily the same without him. And you've got Winnipeg off a loss where, you know, you talk about the Jets off losses lately. They've been really good in this kind of situation. Uh, go back all the way to October 30th. They lost at Vegas. They won the next game against Montreal. They lost at Calgary November 12th. They won the next game at Seattle on a back-to-back. -back. They lost at home to Pittsburgh. They won the next game at home against Carolina. They lost at Minnesota November 23rd. They won the next game at Dallas. They lost to Columbus at home. They bounced back and they beat Anaheim the next game they've been phenomenal off a loss and i know this is a game that's going to get winnipeg all revved up home ice where they've been pretty good for the most part that washington result aside you know 10 and 4 uh, on home ice this year vegas been a great road team 12 and 3 but the last road trip we did see vegas at least lose a couple uh, including the game against uh, pittsburgh uh, by a score of 4 to 3 which is the best team they played on that road trip uh, as well I know they had the big win against Boston, ended their home win streak, but I think this is going to be a tough one, you know, as the injuries have mounted here for the uh, Vegas Golden Knights. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take Winnipeg in this game, minus 140 money line, but I'm going to split it half on that, and I'm going to go half on a first period puck line on Winnipeg because I find two off a loss lately. These first periods, they've come out and had a really good response when they haven't played well than the game before. And I know they're not going to be happy about the way they played against the Capitals. It was the exact same thing we saw, you know, against, I think it was last week it was when they played at home against the, uh, I think it was the Panthers. And Rick Bonus was not happy with the start to the game against Anaheim the game before that. And they had a great first period. I think you're going to see something like that again here. So I'm going to do a split bet. Half of the total amount on Winnipeg minus a half, plus 160. 
uh, in the first period. That's a great price on that first period puck line and the other half on the money line here with the Jets at minus 140. Uh, what do you think here, uh, Kevin, Vegas, and Winnipeg? Yeah, I love that first period puck line uh, side there. I something I'm probably going to join you on. Um, but I I love the the Jets here. This is a great bounce back spot um, at home, and this team it just looks so much different this year under Rick Bonus. Um, that's the mentality and and how hard they're playing each game. Um, of course, that Washington game was was tough. I know a lot of us in in the chat were on on Winnipeg to win that game, but I don't mind going back to them here and. When I was looking at the history between these two teams in the last four outings where Vegas comes to Winnipeg, um, Winnipeg's won all four of those games, and they've also been by more than one goal. Um, so I'm looking to ride that trend here as well. So I'm taking Winnipeg in regulation at plus money. Um, with your little angle there on the first period, I see them coming out strong, getting a nice cushion and, and continuing that on. Uh, through the game. So I like Winnipeg in regulation and I got it for plus 110. Um, and with Vegas just banged up, I think Eichel's one thing, but um, Petrangelo on the back end, he is such a crucial player for this team. And um, I get to watch a lot of their games as well since I'm on the West Coast. And you can yeah. just see the impact he has on on these games. And he he controls the pace of play. He jumps into the play. Um, and with White Cloud out as well, he's a sneaky, sneaky good defenseman. Um, so I'm, I'm taking my chances on Winnipeg and regulation here. All right. I agree with it. I mean, definitely. Uh, if, uh, if you want a little more bang for your buck, I was a little more safe, cautious with the minus 140 full game money line. But if you want a little more bang for your buck, I have no argument with uh, the regulation look on the uh, Winnipeg Jets here in this one uh, either. And, and as far as uh, props go in this game, Winnipeg's been an interesting team because they haven't been scared to shuffle the lineup a little bit. And right now they've got uh, Cole Perfetti on the top line. That guy is a great undervalued prop player right now for the Jets. Uh, he's going to get opportunity now. He's playing with Shifley and Wheeler. Uh, they're going to actually move up. It looks like Morgan Barron, I've talked about him, uh, also might be worth a look. Mikey uh, uh, Essimont is also going to move up the lineup too tonight to the second line for the uh, Winnipeg Jets. Now he has only got one goal on the season uh, but again, the, the ice time is going to go up. He did have two shots on goal in the last game. So playing with good players, uh, that helps as well. Mikey Essimont is going to be playing for Winnipeg with Dubois and Connor, who have been awesome lately for the uh, Jets. And so him and also Perfetti up on that top line with Shifley and Wheeler, I think are worth a look. Perfetti's gotten uh, two goals in the last three games as well uh, for the Winnipeg Jets. So some good uh, player prop options, in my opinion, undervalued. You know, and that's what I look for. I look for a little more value than, say, your standard options like Connor and et cetera and Shifley. Uh, we look for the uh, value with some of these props. And for Vegas, even though I like Winnipeg, you know, one player I would target for them uh, in this game tonight uh, is it's probably either Carrier, who's actually stepped up at times, or Paul Cotter. I'll go back to the well there. He's on the top line, it looks like, for this game tonight, uh, getting opportunity uh, to play alongside Stevenson and Stone. Uh, undervalued in terms of his prop prices right now as well. All right, Edmonton and Nashville. Uh, next up here, we've got uh, Edmonton minus 135 road favorites in Music City, total six and a half uh, across the board uh, in this one. Uh, you got a back to back situation for both of these teams. You know, Edmonton off a loss last night against the uh, Minnesota Wild and the uh, Nashville Predators. How about getting blanked? by the St. Louis Blues, who really have been scuffling defensively, and Jordan Binnington as well, and Binnington pitches a goose egg shutout uh, against the Nashville Predators uh, last night in that game. So both of these teams looking to bounce back. Uh, Nashville, three straight losses. Uh, all of a sudden, we were starting to get excited about the way they were playing, right? They had the back-to-back -back impressive road wins against the Devils and the Islanders, and all of a sudden, they haven't played, they haven't won since then. So that definitely has been uh, a problem for them uh, in uh, recent games. Edmonton, uh, two to one a loss to Minnesota last night it was a really good performance in net by Mark Andre Fleury. Twenty nine saves on thirty shots, and uh, definitely he's had a lot of success. Uh, hasn't had the greatest, uh, or he has had a lot of success, I should say, against Edmonton Fleury, and he had another good night against them uh, last night. Uh, these teams played last month in Edmonton. Edmonton won seven four. Uh, Edmonton is currently on a six and one, or sorry, they've won seven in a row. Mike, my, my beg your pardon, seven and zero oh, uh, run for the uh, Edmonton Oilers uh, head to head uh, against the Nashville Predators. So, 
And I do feel that they're still the better of these two teams. Here's the issue. You're laying a dollar thirty-five with the Oilers, and it's probably a night where they're gonna put Jack Campbell in and we're gonna see what he's got. And Jack Campbell is not a minus one thirty five. I'm gonna lay with him goalie on the road right now. That's just not exactly something I'm excited about doing. But you know, after Skinner got the start last night, it's probably back to Jack Campbell tonight. And we'll let's see. We'll see. And this is another great night to have a bet cast for a game like this. We don't know if Jack Campbell's going to be any better. He's given us no evidence that we can trust him to be any better uh, right now than what he's been. But he has had a week to just sit there and collect his thoughts, be out there and practice, take shots, think about how he can improve, and maybe the time away from being in net. And he's had a lot of time away now, Jack Campbell, since his last start. This is a lot of time that we have not seen him uh, in between the pipes for the Oilers. He hasn't been in a game since all the way back to December 1st, 12 days ago, uh, against the Minnesota Wild when he gave up five goals. So this is 12 days to contemplate your shortcomings, why you've struggled, what can you improve, is there anything in your technique that is flawed right now, is there any little weakness that opposing teams are exploiting, and can you fix it, can you work on it, can you be better, You know, can you get yourself in the mental capacity here to put the struggles aside, it's been 12 days, you've had a chance to, you know, collect your bearings a little bit hit the reset button let's see how he does tonight i certainly need to see it before i believe it because the numbers for campbell are ghastly 4.12 goals against average 872 save percentage um i do like the over a little bit but i'm only going to bet a small amount now you know part of me thinks wait a minute you know maybe campbell's gonna flip the switch be awesome but i'm gonna have to see it before i believe it i do like over six and a half but i'm gonna also save some of the amount that I'm putting on the over, I would have put more on the over pregame if we weren't doing the bet cast tonight, but because we are, we're going to have an opportunity to see the start of this game. Let's see how Edmonton defends. Let's see what kind of start to the game we get out of a struggling goalie who's got no confidence right now and does the 12 day break for him, you know, allow him to hit the pause button and maybe have one of his better outings tonight. Cause we know there's a good goalie in there somewhere. He's shown it the last little bit in Toronto last year and the last couple of years. That's what got his career back on track. But again, I would rather see it before I believe it. Uh, what do you think here, Kevin Edmonton, Nashville? Yeah, this is a tricky one. They, like you said, they're both coming off uh, back to backs. I watched the whole entire Nashville St. Louis game. Um, that shows how much of a hockey fan I am and watched that whole entire thing. Uh, not, You're the best not kind of hockey football. fan. That's why. <laughs> um, so that was, that was a little disappointing. And um, of course the wild, my boy, Terry's wild one, they beat the the Oilers two to one last night. When I looked at this game initially, I'm like, okay, the Oilers are going to explode for goals. They only had one goal last night. Um, McDavid, Drysaitel, Hyman, and crew—they're going to explode tonight. Um, that was my initial thoughts. But Kevin Lincoln is playing in net for the Predators, and I have watched him quite a bit uh, when he was a Blackhawk. My wife's a, a Blackhawks fan, so I watch a lot of those games. Um, and he he's a good goaltender. He can uh, he can steal a game. Um, so I, I don't know. I, this one makes me a little nervous. But um, if I do pick anything, I, I'll probably choose something for the Oilers. Maybe I'll look at some player props. Um, but I'll probably save this one for the BetCast as well. I think that's a good idea. Get, get a feel for it and uh, go from there. I'll throw out a couple trends at you. And I'm not a big trends guy, but this, I think, matters. It's not like we see Edmonton in a 2-1 to one hockey game every day. You know, that is for sure. And obviously we saw it last night with Edmonton and Minnesota. I'll throw this one out at you. The Oilers, in terms of overs, have trended 35 and 17 to the over in 52 game they're in 52 games, their last 52 games after allowing two goals or less in the previous game. So that tells you when they hold a team to two goals or less, like Minnesota last night, the floodgates open the next game. And conversely, when the Oilers are held to two goals or less offensively in their previous game, the next game uh, in the short term, they've trended seven and two to the over. So there you go. It seems like when we get a two to one game from Edmonton, you better be ready to see the floodgates open the next game involving the uh, Edmonton Oilers. So uh, keep that in mind because both their, the, 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 the over is a strong percentage trend when Oiler games, when they are held to two goals or less, and also when they give up two goals or less. It seems like a lot of their next games go over the total. So uh, that's why I think that's significant 
uh, looking at that statistic because it seems like two to one does not go that way, that style of game, that kind of low scoring affair two days, two games in a row rarely ever does for the Edmonton Oilers. So yeah, I do like the over, but again, I'm going to also put some more uh, of my own uh, bankroll on this game during the bet cast when we get a real good indication of what Jack Campbell's going to be. Uh, hopefully he's not a, another freaking mess tonight like he's been, unfortunately, for a large part of the uh, season. As far as the props go with Edmonton, I'm, I'm sticking to the same players I mentioned the other day. Kyler Yamamoto, he finally scored a couple games ago. Obviously, nobody got going offensively last night against Minnesota, but I think Yamamoto's still undervalued. Uh, and obviously for uh, as well, the Nuge, Ryan Nuge and Hopkins can't argue with his production lately. Still value with the Nuge RNH to uh, make an impact for the Oilers as well tonight in this game. Good, some good prop options there. All right, Washington, Chicago. We've got Washington minus 210 road favorites, six the total uh, in this game. You know, there's not a lot of games where I'm just, you know, really not all that interested. This is one of them. I mean, I didn't bet the side, I didn't bet the total. Uh, in this game. I mean, I could only look Washington here because they're starting to play a little bit better, starting to get a little bit healthier at the very least. I mean, to beat Winnipeg like that was impressive uh, the other night. Uh, I sure as fuck do not trust Peter Morozik, who's coming back from the injury list to start tonight for the uh, Blackhawks. That groin, it's probably only a matter of time before he hurts it again. I mean, that's just the way it's been. He's been out since December the 3rd with that injury. He's 2-5 and five with a 4.06 goals against average, 884 save percentage this year, 0-2 in his home starts. He's allowed 13 goals on 94 shots, you know, in his last three starts. I mean, just not the numbers, uh, you know, you want to trust in terms of Morozik uh, here in net for the uh, Blackhawks. Um, so we'll see. And as, look, he's actually... He's actually got to step up here because Soderblom hasn't been that bad lately for the Blackhawks. In fact, he's had some decent moments in net for them uh, in recent games. Can Chicago get their offense going? That's the concern. One goal in the last three games, all of them losses for Chicago against the Islanders, Devils, and the Jets, and scoring just one goal, one measly goal uh, in those last three games combined. And as a result, Luke Richardson has gone wild shaking up the lines here tonight for the uh, Chicago Blackhawks. So much so that this is actually, believe it or not, if Chicago can score a goal, and that's debatable right now, having scored just one goal in the last three games, but if they can, someone you might want to look to to score a goal for them tonight. He's moving on up to the top line. He's only got three goals on the season, but it's someone that's going to be given a great opportunity with Max Domi and with Patrick Kane is Sam Lafferty. Sam Lafferty on the top line tonight, all the way up, I believe, from the uh, fourth line, if I'm not mistaken, for the uh, Blackhawks uh, for this game tonight. Yeah, line the fourth line all the way up to the top line. So from the outhouse to the penthouse, if you will, uh, for Sam Lafferty tonight. And I'm going to look it up right now, what you could find on him for a goal prop tonight, because I know Chicago can't put a puck in the ocean as a hockey team right now, the last three games. But when you have these opportunities uh, right now to bet a player to score, you know, a goal when he's going up from the fourth line to the top line, it is impossible for me to resist that opportunity. So Sam Lafferty to score a goal tonight, you could find it at plus 650 at BetMGM, DraftKings, other books have it as high as plus 650 on Sam Lafferty to score a goal tonight. Excellent value. Excellent. He's going to be on the top line. I'll be putting a piece of that uh, in my pocket tonight for sure. But other than that, it's probably going to be a pass. I wouldn't talk anyone out of the Caps team total over. I guess if I was closest to betting something in this game, it would probably be that. Uh, what do you think here, Kevin? Capitals, Blackhawks. Yeah, this is an ugly one. Um, the Caps struggle to score on the road. They've been playing a little bit better lately, like you said. Uh, but on the road at minus 210, not sure I really like that here. Um Mrazic's in net for Chicago. So that plus 180, I was thinking that's pretty nice, but I can't back Mrazic. Um, one thing I will say about Sam Lafferty, I have watched him play quite a bit, and he is a workhorse. That guy hustles, and he closes gaps, and he he plays very hard. Uh, I think he was leading the league in shorthanded goals before. I think Connor Dewar is now for the Wild, but yep. um, Lafferty was up there. Um, so that's that's a very nice value pick. Yeah, and I, I like that. I might have to join you there. Um, but yeah, I don't I don't like the sides here and I could see this one going under. Um, but then again, we got Mrazic in net and that that's hard to trust. So ultimately it's a pass for me. 
Uh, yeah, good question. Ryan W., if I don't have Twitter, how can I send a message to for the BetCast link? Yeah, email Bobano350 uh, at gmail.com, uh, Ryan. So that's B-O-B-A-N-O-3-5-0 at gmail.com. Send an email there, and if I get your email, Ryan, I will send you the StreamYard link for the BetCast for sure uh, before we begin tonight at uh, 7 o'clock p.m. Uh, Eastern time. So there we go. All right. Philadelphia, Colorado. We've got the uh, Avalanche minus 240 home favorites here. Six the total. It is six in some books shaded to the under. It has dropped to five and a half uh, in a couple other books. So it's that prototypical game where if you like the over, get a five and a half. If you like the under, get a six. I mean, that's why it's important. Have multiple sports books uh, so you can always get the best number, best price uh, around. This game is another one where it's tough. I mean, although I will say for the Philadelphia Flyers, they have been uh, feisty, even in defeat the last few games. The Washington game, remember, it was 2-1 to one before Washington got a couple of late goals. So that was essentially a one-goal game when they lost to the Capitals. 2-1 to one loss in overtime to Vegas, and they outshot the Golden Knights. Um, 41-29, they outshot uh, Arizona. Uh, against the Coyotes Sunday night, they lose 5-4 in overtime. I mean, the, the effort, again, John Tortorella is not bullshitting when he says we work our ass off, we play our ass off. He's right. They work hard. They just don't work smart. And they don't work efficiently. And they don't, <laughs> with all that hard work, it just doesn't result in winning and scoring goals, you know, half the time. They finally did against Arizona, got their offense going after really struggling two games in a row, but still ended up losing the game. And it was one of those nights where, hey, they finally get some goals. And then Carter Hart decides, I'm not going to have one of my better games. And he gives up five goals uh, for the uh, Philadelphia Flyers. And it definitely wasn't one of his better games in that game. And I think Tortorella senses that because he's going with uh, Felix Sandstrom in net. And this is not a back-to-back -back situation either for Philadelphia. They don't play tomorrow night. And yet he's still going with Felix Sandstrom. So I get the sense Torts was a little annoyed about Carter Hart's performance the other night against Arizona. He sees that, hey, my team finally scores four goals and we still lose. And, uh, you know, which sometimes Torts gets cranky, you know, Mr. Cranky Pants with his goaltending. So uh, at this point in time, Felix Sandstrom has been confirmed and will be the uh, starter tonight for the uh, Flyers. Pavel Francouz will be in net for the uh, Colorado Avalanche. Uh, he actually uh, ended up getting the start against St. Louis uh, over the weekend, and he uh, led the Avalanche to a three-game losing streak snapping victory uh, over the St. Louis Blues in that game. Stopped two goal, stopped uh, 30 saves or made 30 saves on 32 shots, only allowed two goals uh, in that game. Uh, so uh, Francois is going to get a second straight start in net for the uh, Avalanche. Jared Bednar making that decision since he led them to that victory, which snapped a four-game losing streak uh, against St. Louis. And so he's given Francois the net again, and it'll be Sandstrom for Philly. Um, I, I don't know if that overtime win against a struggling St. Louis team is enough for me to say, hey, let's take Colorado here, minus 240. Still a banged-up team, although they did get Nachushkin and Lekkinen back uh, over the weekend, which is significant. Uh, they still have McKinnon out, Rodriguez out, two of their centers, Bowen Byram still out on the blue line, uh, as well as Josh Manson. Those are two big absences. And Landeskog, of course, still on IR. He's been there forever. Um, it definitely feels like Colorado, though, will want this game. They lost, of course, to Philadelphia uh, just recently, 5-3 uh, in Philly against the uh, Flyers. I think I could make a case for Colorado first period puck line. I think that if I were to bet something in that game, I could probably look in that direction. Uh, minus a half, plus 130 first period puck line. Uh, for the uh, Colorado Avalanche. So plus 130 price for that is pretty good. Full game puck line is around plus 110. I don't love that price as much. Uh, and But I do think we might get a good start out of Colorado, you know, knowing that, hey, Philly punked us the other night. I know we had a lot of injuries in that game, but to lose to the Flyers, that can't sit well with Colorado. So that first period puck line look for Colorado, I might be able to pull the trigger on that one. Uh, at plus 130. Certainly the price is appealing to me. Uh, what do you think here, uh, Kevin? Flyers, Avalanche. Yeah, this is another another ugly one to look at, but the Flyers, I was I was trying to find a way to to back them um, at, at this plus 200 price. It's not bad. We are in a revenge spot for Colorado. They're getting some, some guys back, some key players. Um, but like you said, Tortorella teams, they play hard. Um, you can definitely count on that. Um, so an angle I might look at is is Philly plus one and a half. I don't know what the price is on that. I don't typically take those, but um, I could see them keeping this pretty close. Um, uncomfortable to take them on the money line, but 
maybe a little insurance with that plus one and a half it is a look. Uh, but ultimately, for me, this one's going to be a pass. All right. It's a pass here for uh, Kevin with Flyers and Avs. Uh, not much for, uh, in terms of uh, player. Uh, Tippett's the one that might be interesting for uh, Philadelphia. He's played solid hockey the last few weeks. Colorado, of course, their lineup is starting to get, like I said, healthier. Uh, Confer and O'Connor and Cogliano has been a decent line, but they've got Big Val, Nachushkin, Rantanen, and Lekkonen together on the uh, top line. So, again, there's at least they're starting to get a little bit better. The under is definitely something that could hit tonight. Not applicable is right. I mean, I would certainly lean that way. Colorado has been an under machine with all these injuries. I mean, they're trying to keep things a little bit tighter, keep things a little bit lower scoring. Philadelphia doesn't mind playing that way. Of course, either under Tortorella, they've gone seven and three to the under uh, in their last 10 games. So the under definitely uh, makes some sense, but make sure you shop around, find a six uh, if you like this game under the total. All right. Final game here of this Massive Tuesday card. We've got the Arizona Coyotes and the San Jose Sharks. Uh, Arizona, wow. So after all of that road trip, you you basically keep this team at home for two measly games, and now all of a sudden they're back on the road again? I mean, my goodness. Talk about great job there uh, by the NHL schedule makers there. I thought I expected at least a five- or six-game homestand for Arizona at Mullet Arena after having that ridiculously over a month road trip. And here they are back on the road again here tonight, Arizona, as they take on the uh, San Jose Sharks. San Jose minus 175 uh, home favorites, six being the uh, total uh, in this game. Um, we'll have to see who's in net for San Jose, or sorry, for Arizona, if it's Vimelka. I am tempted by the Coyotes, believe it or not, as a dog, if it is uh, Corral Vimelka in net for this game. James Reimer. Uh, is going to be the netminder for the Sharks, and he is finally back and healthy again. He's been sidelined since the end of November with a lower body injury. He's not a goalie that I trust, uh, even when he is healthy, and now he's coming off this long time away with this lower body injury, uh, and I'm not convinced he's going to be all that you know, healthy, all that at, at his absolute best here uh, in his first start back in quite some time. And, you know, his numbers on the year, James Reimer, are still pedestrian, plodding. He's 5-9. and nine, Three goals against average, 903 save percentage going into this game tonight against the uh, Coyotes. Uh, and I believe he's al already faced uh, Arizona uh, earlier this season. I'm pretty sure he did. Maybe he didn't. Uh, maybe I'm thinking of last year. But uh, I know there's been some instances with him and net against uh, Arizona where he struggled. So, yeah, I am eyeing Arizona as a potential live uh, road underdog here tonight uh, in this game. They have won two in a row. Now, both of them at home. You know, they got to prove they can go on the road. Uh, and get the job done. They're still only a six and 14 road team this year, the Arizona Coyotes, but I would still lean to them at this price, but I'd feel a lot better uh, about backing them with Vimelka in net. You know, I'm not the most, uh, the biggest fan of Connor Ingram, who is of course the backup here for the uh, Coyotes and his numbers bear out why I'm not a big fan of his play in net one and six. He is with a 4.57 goals against average, 866 save percentage. So Vimelka confirmed, says uh, Terry Edelman. So let me just uh, double check because you're right. Roto Wire didn't have it confirmed yet. Yeah, it is. Uh, Corral Vimelka, I think I think with the way he's playing right now, like he's the only reason they beat Boston. You know, 46 shots uh, for the Bruins in that game. And he followed it up again with a uh, win over uh, Philadelphia. Not nearly as good, but I think after facing all the shots he faced with Boston, maybe he was a little bit fatigued from that start. Uh, I still think eh, you could do a lot worse than take this plus 155 or so. A price tag with uh, Arizona in this game. This might be an Arizona team total over because I was leaning over, but I don't really love the idea of taking the full game over as much with uh, Karel Vamelka in net. I might gravitate more toward a team total over two and a half minus 135, and I might split it up. You know, I've been doing this with the bigger, the bigger underdogs lately, splitting it up with the team total over and the money line. And I might do that here with Arizona team total over two and a half minus 135 split with the money line here at plus 155. Uh, Kevin, what do you think here uh, from your backyard? How do you think the Coyotes fair tonight facing San Jose in the tank? Yeah, so it's only fitting that I, I back my oats here. First time on the ice guys being an advocate for hockey in Arizona. Um, my model does like the, the Coyotes a little bit here as far as an edge is concerned. Um, the fair odds I'm getting are about plus 133. Um, so this price at plus one, 155 is is really nice, I think. And uh, James Reimer in net for, for San Jose and and Vegmelka for, for the Yotes. Uh, I could see the Yotes taking this one. So 
I actually have the, the same exact split you do, Ian. I've got the team total two and a half for the Yotes. Um, and then I've also got the sprinkle on the, the Yotes money line tonight. So let's see if my desert dogs can get it done for us. Yeah, indeed. Let's uh, definitely see if they can uh, get it done. Uh, it looks like, too, there's a couple injuries for San Jose. Nieto is a depth forward, but he's been pretty solid for them, both ends of the ice. He's uh, out for tonight. And Bar- Barabanov has actually been an impressive player for San Jose. He's got, been on the top six all season. He's got three goals, 16 assists, 19 points on the year for San Jose. He's got a lower body injury, missed practice yesterday, and he may not go tonight for the uh, Sharks. So that could be uh, 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 that could be a, a big absence, too, for the Sharks tonight. If Barabanov doesn't play, it would shake things up uh, in terms of the top six forward group. As far as the player props go, I think there's M- – Michelli is moving up to the top, to the second line for Arizona. I've talked about Lawson Kraus for weeks. Uh, he's always worth a look. Same with Nick Schmaltz uh, on the uh, top line. He's always been someone you can really rely on for Arizona uh, offensively. If anyone's going to do some damage, often Schmaltz uh, is that player. Uh, and so there's some player props I would look at from the Coyotes side uh, for this game uh, here tonight. All right, that is the Tuesday card. Uh, great job, uh, Kevin, for the first time on the Ice Guys show. Uh, great, excellent analysis. Uh, that is great stuff. And again, uh, before we get to best bets and wrap up the show, just tell everybody where they can find you on Twitter. Yeah, of course. You can find me on Twitter at KevBets, uh, as you can see on the screen. And yeah, I'd love to connect and to work on some picks together. But uh, thanks, Ian, for having me. This was a blast. Yeah, absolutely. And a reminder, again, uh, the BetCast is tonight. We want everybody joining us here. Uh, Absolutely. We want to make it uh, a big-time event. We had a great showing, a great turnout uh, in November uh, when we did the BetCast, and we definitely uh, want uh, more of that here tonight. So, again, either email me, bobano350 at gmail.com, or DM me on Twitter if you want to join us live on the BetCast tonight starting at 7 o'clock p.m. Eastern time, and I will send you the StreamYard link for the BetCast uh, before we begin. So that's tonight at 7 p.m. Eastern. Live betting, commentary, bring some beer, you know, vino, whatever drink you want. It doesn't even have to be alcoholic or liquor. It can just be water, whatever. Uh, But we're going to have some fun, uh, as always. Our last BetCast of the year as well tonight, so... Uh, Make sure you join us for that at 7 p.m. Eastern time. And a reminder, we have a brand new sponsor here, the Ice Guys. We're proud to uh, be supported now. Uh, Support for the Ice Guys brought to you by our friends at Manscaped, manscaped manscaped.com. The best in men's below-the-waist grooming. Their products are precision-engineered tools for your family jewels. Manscaped's uh, performance uh, package, the ultimate men's hygiene bundle. Join over 7 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped with this exclusive offer for you. You can get 20% off and free worldwide shipping using the promo code ICEGUYS, I-C-E-G-U-Y-S. That's promo code ICEGUYS at manscaped.com. So make sure you take advantage of of that. Uh, Again, get 20% off and free shipping with the code ICEGUYS at manscaped.com. Unlock your confidence and always use the right tools for the job with Manscaped. The Lawnmower 4.0 is excellent. Can use it anywhere. The Weed Whacker, I talked about it yesterday. Get the uh, nose hairs out of your way. They're no longer an issue thanks to that. Great tools, great accessories to keep you trim. Uh, Manscaped.com, promo code uh, ICEGUYS. Uh, Make sure uh, you check that out. Uh, And also Patreon.com slash ICEGUYS. Uh, Again, $10 a month, uh, our daily betting card uh, is posted there and so many other great, uh, you know, perks there. You're going to have bonus content, uh, you know, goalie charts, totals charts, you name it. Uh, So make sure you subscribe for $10 a month, patreon.com slash ice guys. And as you see on the bottom of the screen, manscaped.com, you get 20% off and free shipping uh, by using the promo code. Uh, ice guys all right it is time for best bets now to wrap up this edition uh, of the ice guys we'll start with our special guest kevin uh what do you like for your first ever ice guys show best bet yeah pressure's on here uh i really like winnipeg uh, money line tonight just straight up i think the best you could find was 130 last night it it may have moved a, a little bit but um that's my favorite one for tonight so winnipeg jets money line all right, Winnipeg Jets money line. Winnipeg uh, for uh, Kevin with his best bet against Vegas. Uh, and uh, do you want to go in money line or in regulation? Uh, I'm just going to take money line on that one. Money line. All right, yep. there we go. Money line minus 140. Winnipeg uh, for uh, Kevin with his best bet. And it's funny because I used Winnipeg first period uh, uh, in the uh, last week against uh, Florida for best bet. So, and I agree with you there. But my best bet uh, for this game for this card tonight. 
Uh, I'm going to keep it very simple. Lots of goals, in my opinion. Los Angeles, Buffalo. We're going to go over six and a half with the Kings and the Sabres, minus 135. Uh, I expect goals in this game tonight. Kings, Sabres, over six and a half for my best bet for this Tuesday NHL card. And that's a wrap. Great job by Kevin. The BetCast is tonight, 7 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, make sure you join us for that. Email or DM me if you want to join us on the stream. Looking forward to it. And Alex B. Smith will be back with me as well for the BetCast tonight. Looking forward to it. A massive slate. Hopefully we'll turn out a, a, a great deal of profit as well uh, during tonight's live BetCast. Uh, we thank you for joining us. A reminder, the Ice Guys is live seven days a week, Monday to Friday, 2 p.m. Eastern, Saturday and Sunday, noon Eastern. If you can't watch the show live, download the Ice Guys podcast in audio form on all major podcast platforms, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, Amazon Music, and more. Download the Ice Guys podcast when you can't watch the show live. For our special guest, Kevin, follow him on Twitter at Kev underscore bets. Uh, I'm Ian Cameron. Have a great Tuesday, and we will see you again tonight at 7 p.m. Eastern for the live BetCast, The Ice Guys, presented by National Hockey Now. Mm -hmm.